Welcome to this episode of the Lead the Future podcast. I'm Vince Molinaro, and I'm excited to be joined by Rob Chestnut. He was most recently the Chief Ethics Officer of Airbnb, Inc. He also previously led eBay's North America legal team, where he founded the Internet's first e-commerce person-to-person platform, Trust and Safety Team. Before that, he served as general counsel with Chegg, Inc. uh, for nearly six years and 14 years with the U.S. Justice Department. He's the author of a new book, an amazing book called Intentional Integrity, How Smart Companies Can Lead an Ethical Revolution. And Rob now focuses his time working uh, with companies to help them develop strategies to drive integrity deep into their cultures. So welcome, Rob. Thanks for making time for us on the Lead the Future podcast. Thanks for having me, Vince. I'm always curious when interviewing and, and talking to an accomplished leader, but also an accomplished leader who becomes an author, uh, you know, really what, what was kind of the motivation for you really tackling this topic of integrity? What, what inspired you? Well, I, I think what was happening in the world inspired me. You know, I first noticed Uber, frankly. Uber is right down the street from Airbnb and Susan Fowler's blog post about the, the issues inside that company, uh, the Me Too movement. It really struck me that the world was changing and that, you know, people were expecting more out of companies and more out of leaders than ever. And, you know, it it was important, I thought, for Airbnb to really think about that uh, and to be intentional about our response, because uh, I, I think companies that understand the direction the world is moving in and what expectations Uh, people now have of companies, understanding that I think means that you can get ahead of it and actually benefit from it. But if you don't, uh, as we've seen, it can really tear your brand apart and ruin careers. Yeah. And so as you look out in the landscape, in in the world of business right now, through that integrity lens, are you inspired by what you're seeing? Are you concerned? Uh, What's your take right now, given the year that we've been going through? I would say I'm encouraged by the movement. You know, I think, you know, Vince, just five years ago, companies were expected to do one thing, and that was make money. And leaders, uh, I think, were forgiven uh, bad behavior as long as the stock price was up. Uh, I think what I've seen in the last five years is a, a, a demand, really, by employees of companies and by consumers for more than that. And I think part of this is, you know, the, the transparency that comes about from living in this interconnected world. You know, when, when I was growing up, there were three news stations. If I wanted to learn about a company, I had to go back to my parents' bedroom with Encyclopedia Britannica and get 10-year-old information. You know, today, we are all our own news station, right? We, we put out a newscast whenever we post on Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram. And we all have a camera crew that follows us everywhere we go. It's called our cell phone. And in this world, there are no secrets. You know, integrity used to be doing the right thing even when no one is watching. Well, you know, today, everybody's always watching. And uh, in the old days, employees uh, used to count on working at a company for 30 years so that they could get their gold watch and their pension. Today, they're working at a company's two or three years. They're a lot more mobile and they are not afraid to speak up anymore if they see something that's not aligned with their own values. So I I think in this world, uh, companies have to be focused like never before and with intentionality on doing the right thing. Because if they don't, they're gonna get called out for it. Yeah, I, I love the term intentional integrity as, as your book title, because I'm all about leaders being intentional and deliberate. But I also love the, the subtitle, particularly in reference to, and I think this is what you're alluding to, right? This ethical, um, this ethics revolution. And, and what, what kind of sparked that idea? Because ultimately, that's really what you're talking about and, and, and the core premise of your book. Well, as I saw companies falling right and left, right, and leaders uh, you know, the you know, McDonald's CEO losing his job, you know, the problems at WeWork and Uber and Facebook and the like. And it's, it struck me, you know, in the old days, you know, doing right was or doing good. Uh, that was something a business did at the end of the year if they had a little leftover money, 
right? We can sponsor a little league team or a scholarship. Mm -hmm. I, th I think today there's an understanding that this can drive your business. This can help you attract and retain top talent. You know, in the old days, you know, this was, you know, it, it, business is business, right? Uh, today, I think uh, this idea of doing good is business and actually aligned with being more profitable and successful as a company. We're losing our confidence in traditional organizations and we're looking to our corporations in particular, the expectations on CEOs to uh, have a have a perspective on social issues, to speak up on social issues, and to your point, to be seen as an agent of change, not just to drive profits, there's nothing wrong with that, uh, but also to make the world a better place. Uh, uh, you write about that as well, and, and kind of what's your understanding of that right now? Because it's very aligned with everything you, you've just said. I think it's harder to be a leader than it used to be. Yeah. In, in the old days, you just had to make money. Uh, you know, today you are expected not only to, to make money, but to do it while really leading from the heart. You know, look, every company needs a North Star today. Uh, you know, and your profit is not purpose. You've got to articulate a purpose about why your company is good for the world, why what you're doing is important. And you have to lead, I think, with that as your North Star. You have to make decisions that way. And I'll give you an example. I'd only been at Airbnb for uh, a couple of months uh, there were allegations that began to surface online about discrimination on Airbnb. Uh, there was a hashtag, Airbnb while black, that guests were having difficulty, guests of color were having difficulty booking a room on Airbnb. And I, I remember as the general counsel, uh, I went off and did my legal research, Vince. You know, I went off and, and is Airbnb as a platform legally responsible if its hosts engage in discriminatory action? Do discrimination laws even apply on a platform like Airbnb where someone might just be sharing a room in their home? And I went into Brian Chesky, you know, the founder CEO, and started going through some of the legal implications. And Brian holds up his hand and says, stop, I don't care. <laughs> well, what, well, Brian, what do you mean you don't care? And Brian said, look, Rob, Airbnb's purpose is to connect people in a very human, authentic way through travel, to get people from different backgrounds and different cultures to get to know each other, get out behind the computer screens, really get to know each other as human beings. That's why we exist as a company. And if this sort of behavior is really going on on our website, we are failing as a company. So he said, I don't really care what the law wow. is because we're going to fix it. And if it costs us a bunch of money, that's fine too. What was so important about that is you got to stand for something. You've got to have a, that bigger purpose and you've got to be willing to make decisions that are consistent with that bigger purpose, even if they might hurt you a bit in the short run. I think Brian believed, I think accurately so, that that was the right way for the company to go for the long run. It was the right thing to stand for. And I think it inspired employees and consumers as well and the right thing to do for the company and the world. Yeah, these things have to be lived. Um, and when you get tested as a company, that's when they're, that's when you really find out uh, whether those words are really, um, uh, really true and meaningful to your company. Well, the, the test often comes when you're asked to do something that might hurt your short term financial prospects, right? Um, and I, I think a lot of companies lived by the old Milton Friedman mantra that always do what's best for the shareholder. And that has right. been interpreted over decades as doing whatever will bring up the, the stock price this week or this quarter. Yeah. And that leads yeah. to a lot of short-term thinking, Vince. And also yeah. I think leads to a lot of decisions that are ethically questionable. If, because then you have no compass other than a, a short-term stock price. And I think what the world has evolved to, and we've seen this by the way, with uh, the business Roundtable and BlackRock, uh, a rejection of that old shareholder value uh, mantra uh, and an acceptance of a, a new world uh, known as stakeholder principles. That is, all companies should recognize that they have multiple stakeholders. You know, sure, investors are important. Making money is critical, but they're not the only thing. You've also got to recognize that your employees are important, that your customers are important. And I think also you've got to recognize that you've got a broader obligation to the world to do the right thing in the broader sense of community in the world. And when you do that, 
when you start to act with multiple stakeholders in mind, uh, I, I think your decisions become more ethical and I, and I believe ultimately your business will be more successful. So uh, I'm, I've read your book, I'm listening to you, I am bought in, uh, how do I do this in my own company? And you talk about sort of six C's, and if, if you don't mind, take a few minutes to kind of give us an overview of those on how I can do it uh, in my own company. It, it starts with having an honest conversation with your board and your leadership about what your North Star is as a, as a company. You know, a lot of companies don't put a lot of thought into it, their North Star really is profit. And I, I think, uh, understanding why you exist and what's good, you know, why you're good for the world, and then committing that you're going to make decisions consistent with that purpose, even when it might hurt in the short term a little bit, I think is your first step. Then you also have to make a commitment that you're going to treat each other inside the company with a level of respect. Uh, and you have to have some common understanding of what that may mean, because that can be different things to different companies and different cultures. One of the six C's is uh, building a code of conduct or a code of ethics uh, that, that's meaningful. You know, that's so many times companies, um, when it comes to a code of ethics, uh, what do they do? Well, they go online and they find some other company's code of ethics and they copy and paste it, put their own name at the top, right? You know, the, the irony is stealing someone, stealing a code of ethics is rich. Uh, and then they email it out to everybody in the company. And then they say, check a box. Check a box saying that you've read it and you're going to follow it. <laughs> well, thank goodness we've dealt with that problem. Uh, everybody in the company knows uh, what's going on. This is a compliance check the box exercise. Most people never even read the code of ethics and don't take it seriously because they know it's meaningless. Uh, you know, at Airbnb, what we did was we recognized that this is an important, uh, an important contract, really, for all of us to think about inside the company, and therefore it's something that we all ought to create ourselves. So we put together a diverse group, uh, people from all around the world, and also from different disciplines. You know, we had folks from uh, engineering and finance and customer support and marketing. And we all talked about the sort of issues that are in a code of ethics and designed it ourselves in our own language. And what we learned is that the number one way that people want to raise ethical issues inside of our company was through the ethics advisors, someone on their team that they, that they felt comfortable with, that they knew. And I, I think these are the sorts of things that I talk about in the book and the six C's, practical things that you can do to drive integrity into the culture of your company with intentionality. Uh, integrity is contagious. If people see leaders acting with integrity, then they're going to step up and want to act with integrity as well. But of course, the reverse is true. And if you are in an environment where leaders aren't acting with integrity, well, that gives you a rationalization or an excuse to act the same way. And so what I talk about really in the book is the importance of leaders owning it and intentionally making it a part of their, their leadership game. Um, and creating that temperature or that environment inside of a company. So how do I basically be more intentional uh, with integrity just day to day? What are the things uh, yeah. that you've seen work uh, that would be helpful to a cross section of leaders? I'll tell you a story, I'll give you an example of something that any leader can do. I was standing at my desk. We had stand up desk at Airbnb, not offices. And I was in a, a, a large room, a lot of other people, right? All working. Guy walks up to me and introduces himself. He's a mid-level manager in IT. And I greeted him and thanked him for coming by. And he said, Rob, I couldn't help but notice, but when you left your computer stand a little while ago, you left your computer screen on. You didn't, you didn't lock your computer. Uh, and so your screen was open. So, you know, Vince, to be honest with you, the, uh, I'll tell you what ran through my mind. The first thing that ran through my mind was, oh, come on, come on. There's nothing sensitive on my screen. I went to the restroom. I got an iced tea and came right back. We're in a building where everybody's badged and locked. Give me a break. Calling me out for a security violation. Right? But fortunately, my second thought came to mind. And my second thought was this. How great is it to work at a company where a mid-level manager feels comfortable enough to walk up to an executive team member and call them out for doing something wrong? That's fabulous. I think things like that, where leaders can recognize that what they do, just in the little things, 
can have such a big impact on so many people in setting a culture of a company. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, what you, what you described too, is these are really, you know, small moments that don't seem extraordinary. And I think sometimes with, with leaders as well, their roles give them power. Uh, there are actions that they can take that could lead one down a slippery slope when it comes to integrity. And so I think, you know, we got to hold our, our, you know, ourselves, you know, accountable, but then it's helpful where you create a culture as you did, where, you know, you, you have a middle manager going to a senior executive saying, Hey, you've got an issue here. And, and that's, you know, that's the ideal end state. What, what do you see as the relationship between sort of intentional integrity and accountability? Well, in, in, integrity to me, uh, does not mean perfection. Because if, look, if, if integrity required perfection, then none of us would have integrity. Uh, integrity is about um, defining a purpose, a North Star, whether it be in your life or in your business, and then committing that you're going to live by words and actions according to that North Star. But, you know, Vince, there's another level to it, and that is nobody's perfect, and you're going to make mistakes. And the issue isn't whether you make a mistake or not. The issue is, do you have the self-awareness to recognize when you've made a mistake? And do you have the courage to say, I screwed up? It also means that you've got to have the courage to hold others accountable when they make a mistake, even if they are your top engineer or a top salesperson. Because if if successful individuals are quote unquote given a pass and allowed to do whatever they like, that encourages the behavior even more and is really corrosive to your culture from an integrity perspective. Steve Jobs talked about the 10Xer, right? the engineer that could do the work of 10 engineers because they're so smart. Um, I tried to recognize some of those 10Xers at Airbnb. And what I would do is I would go around to them preemptively. And I said, look, you are an extremely talented individual and so valuable to the company. Um, also beware of the fact that because you're so good, um, people watch you, they emulate you, they copy you. And because you are so talented at what you do, there might be a natural tendency to think that there are things you can get away with. We can't have that at the company. And in fact, we need you to step up when it comes to your behavior, um, in part because you set such an important example. And you can actually prevent a lot of behavior if you go to these people right up front, prevent that kind of bad behavior, and let them know that you're counting on them. I would put uh, an integrity talk on the calendar of leaders every year, an integrity talk with Rob. And we would sit down literally and have a conversation about, here are the three things I've seen in the last year at other companies that take leaders down. You know, maybe it's sexual harassment, maybe it's excessive drinking, at a party and the like. And we would actually talk about each one of these. And we would then, I would then have a conversation with the leader about, hey, have you seen anything at, at, uh, anywhere on your team that might cause you trouble? And by having that conversation, it really keeps it on the radar. It, again, it's an intentional, specific conversation just about integrity. But so often, I think what leaders fail to appreciate is their success makes them more vulnerable to these sorts of problems. In other words, science actually demonstrates that people that have had a lot of success in life, it carries with it a certain invincibility or a belief that you can manipulate any situation, almost an entitlement. And it, it's unconscious. So what you've got to do is you've got to get ahead of it and teach them the psychology up front and just say, look, you have to understand that your success actually makes you more vulnerable to these sorts of issues. And it's my job as the general counsel to help you understand that. So that with awareness and with intentionality, you can address it and make sure you don't go down that path. I'd love to get your words of wisdom to future leaders. We've got high expectations of them. What advice uh, would you give them given your experiences as a leader, but also in your work with intentional integrity? Brian Chesky, the founder of Airbnb, used to always say, um, skate to where the puck is going, not to where it is right now understand where the world is moving. So to young entrepreneurs, I would say business has dramatically changed just in the last 10 years. The old way of thinking, you know, of the, the, the exclusive focus on short term financial results uh, isn't going to be acceptable anymore. So my advice is 
uh, you know, think about what the world needs. Think about what's good for the world. Think about what inspires you. Put that at the center of what you're creating. And then with intentionality, make sure that what you do every day uh, is in furtherance of that purpose. And I think uh, by doing that, you will inspire your, uh, your employees, your, your customers, and I think uh, be far more successful in the business and I think be proud of what you do in the world. Well, thank you so much, Rob. I really appreciate your time, the generosity of your insights, and, and just the sheer conviction you bring to uh, Intentional Integrity. Thank you. Congratulations on the success of the book. It's getting such great reviews. And uh, as an author, I, I know how hard it is to do that. Uh, so uh, great, great work. And uh, thanks again. Appreciate it. I hope folks enjoy the book. And if, uh, if folks are interested in the topic, uh, I'm on LinkedIn doing a post about integrity in business almost every day. Love for people to reach out and connect with me through LinkedIn or through uh, the website, uh, www.intentionalintegrity.com.